Hello and welcome my friends. Today is T1 day and T1 is facing G2. So like, you know how it goes. T1 is going to win and G2, I mean, second place is also fine. Uh, I already see Faker gets to play uh, Oriana. Uh, have they not watched the VOD? Okay, nice. Uh, let's just hope that they don't have any like annoying counters prepared. And also, let's get into the game, my friends. Okay, my friends, it's going to be a white one. Crack open your cold one. Lay back and enjoy. What the hell is this game so far? Let's just uh, attack this Kha'Zix and LeBlanc. G2, man, they really think, they really think they can do this to us. Okay, let's, let's see, let's see. Uh, my, my voice, it's, it's getting better. Now it's just no split, which obviously, uh, it's disgusting. I won't show it on video and I won't, I can't show it and uh, whatever else, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So uh, I'm getting better, right? My voice is a bit raspy. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for all the, uh, welcome, get well wish wishes, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's just also hope that uh, T1 gets well and uh, can do something interesting, right? We have owner here, right? I'm a big fan of Sajani right now because we have comps like this G2 comp. Uh, we're going to talk about the players playing the champions in a moment, but uh, overall, like, what do they do if a Sajani throws her ult at them, right? Obviously, Yike maybe can jump, Broken Blade maybe can jump, okay, and uh, Caps. Cool, sure can jump right but the bot lane is stationary they're fucked right this is not the best example but overall we have seen so many comps where it's like oh i have ash arrow i have uh sejuani old you're just cut owner zeus com uh, combined with faker later can set up some really nice team fight moments right um like there's some wombo combo potential so in the 5v5 i think t1 heavily favored uh g2 like like a banger strap comp okay doesn't get the stun but we get the second and first blood for owner nicely nice no 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 nicely done um now faker comes over it's like hey my blue buff ah yeah i took my blue buff cringe oh wait the zeus here gets flashed on her but okay. Ah. Hiya. Okay. Let's go! Zeus and owner again say no more and put it down finally, man. This caps guy was getting annoying, right? Jumping around like, haha, look how good I'm. I'm pressing W. Oh, I press W again. Okay, Faker here looking for Hans. And uh, overall, T1 is not too weak, right? If we have uh, some threat onto Hans, we're like balling. Okay, Carrier gone. We need that guy. Hello, I like Carrier. Please give him back. Okay, Mickey just evaporates. Guma here in trouble. We'll live in the end. I mean, maybe not for long. Oh my god. Ah, Kurba. Continues to chase. Kerry does have the red buff, can get a slow onto Cavs, but you really can't slow the LeBlanc that much. I think Cavs should be able to chase him down here, just needs to change the land. Kerry flashes away. Ah, come on. Hey, uh, come on, kill him for that. Yeah, deserved. Have fun with your kill on the support. Now, Guma, 2k, uh, 2 kills, right? Still 2k down, right? That's like 10 turret plates, first blood turret, and whatever else, right? G2 here looking for some place, but uh, maybe you're a bit too brazen there. Hello, Yike already fucked up, no? And I mean, Zeus maybe a bit too far forward. Yeah, he will fall. Ah, uh, that's not good. That's not. Hans got the shutdown and the cash in. And yeah, I mean, overall, I think in total gold, it's like worth, right? We're now like only 200 gold behind. We get three kills for one. But the problem is, Hansama just, I mean, he got, like, all the money. Okay, so, Baron is live, so that's a uh, crossover potential, but overall, it's all about the soul. How the fuck? Should be alright here. 
Right, now Hans all alone, actually with Broken Blade. No, he can't manage to save him. And G2 was getting all too antsy, right? It's like, oh, where's the T1 members? Mm, oh, where's T1? And oh, there's T1, or rather there's Zeus, right? Uh, mid laners, Bing Chilling, uh, Trading Farm, right? That's not really what LeBlanc wants to do. And oh, oh, oh Merry Christmas. Okay. <gasps> Caps, he's so good, he pressed W on the animation of Shockwave. Like, I mean, there is literally like next to nothing like Oriana can do against the LeBlanc. Like, laning phase, maybe, but... Uh, actually, that was... could... nah. But yeah, uh, very nice. Uh, so obviously we lose the soul, unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, G2 overcommit and completely forget where the fuck is Zeus. Look at this. I mean, they they ha they know he's there, right? He shows on vision. And look at this. He even hits the wall. But look where everyone is on G2. They completely forgot about that guy. And BB here with the E flash, right? It try it nearly saves it, but like, no, actually, that's cope on me. Like, he tries to save it, right? But, uh, like, once Hound Summer is dead, like, that team just falls over. There is nothing they have, right? Is he going for, uh, like, Ludens or Malignants? Or what's the idea? Okay. Nice. Nice. Smacked him, cut him up, nanate him. Whatever you want, man. Zeus is showing, like, top gap for real, for real in the counter matchup. And uh, yeah, now 6,000 gold lead, we have the Baron for a couple more seconds. And uh, yeah, our comp has scaled up, right? And the 5v5s were always our uh, strength, right? And G2 completely missed out on like any opportunity to really generate um, like crazy skirmishes or something, right? Um, like, I'm not, I mean, they obviously got five kills, right? So that's that cool for them, but... Uh, it's just a bit opportunistic at best, right? Ignite is enough here. And uh, yeah, with 11 more seconds, I think we maybe can fish for something. If G2 doesn't know the perfect timing for Baron, then yeah, maybe they get baited into something. That's exactly what I meant, the wombo combo, right? Zero's jumping in, like they seeing, owner throwing shit behind. Setting up for Faker's ult, and then with all of that, even carry a small ult can come over and just destroy them. Absolutely magnificent performance here in game number one. Looked fine, right, for G2 in the earlier stages, obviously. And we'll have to say, they leveraged this bot lane matchup very, very fucking well, right? They know it's an easy clap, easy win for them. Um, and they maneuvered them in top lane, bot lane, right? They shifted them around so that Han Summer got monstrously fed. Very nice, uh, but then they failed to capitalize on that. They failed to get a cash in on them at a relevant game state, and then you notice, or at least I think we can interpret it in a certain way, that uh, that they got kind of antsy, right? It's like, oh, we need to make some plays. And let's go here, maybe a bit too forcing at times, right? Which is needed at that point, but. Uh, yeah, it's just rough. Anyway, great game number one. Let's have a second. Great number two. T1 fighting. Let's go. Faker gets to play Azir, right? They actually have no fucking like respect to the man, right? Every uncle, every son, father, grandpa, whoever, right? Everyone you know, they ban Faker's champions, right? That's the avenue to success. Oh, it's because he can only play two champions. Uh, we can discuss why this is effective or not, but uh, certainly giving him Oriana, Azir, Ari, right? Giving him these champions uh, has not been all too successful for his opponents. And uh, yeah, now let's see Azir, right? It's like, uh, it's surely going to be great. We have to admit G2, they have the one and only Aurelian Soul, which I mean, even in his defeats, right? Has looked uh, pretty monstrously powerful. Champion deals an insane amount of damage and yada yada yada. Yeah, it's the it's the classic, right? Gang Faker level one. And uh, yeah, just set everything up for Caps to succeed. We'll have to see if G2 as a whole can capitalize on that. Anyway, uh, yeah, here we have some skirmishing on Cam, but. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean. 
Ni ni nice punish by owner, but just illegal puffing by Yike. I mean, how the fuck do you go like go that way? Yeah. Ah. Oh man, that's funny. That's uh, we can, I can't even be mad about that. That's just funny. I'm getting so angry, right? We're talking about like a difference of 10 HP here, like changing it from like being a one for one or just being a kill for caps. And uh, they're like, oh yeah, Faker absolutely got awful inting. He should kill YS and so on and so on. Bro, calm down, man. 10 HP difference and like Faker gets the kill, gets the fa like, a fast reset with the wave in a good spot. It's like, huh? Which would be like would be completely fine, right? And uh, yeah, Faker has no flash. Remember, like the level one play by Mickey. Faker, okay. He tries to line it up, but the uh, owner's not here yet. Uh, ah, cool, man. Is it a fucking like Reddit meetup or what? So many cringe motherfuckers coming into my mid lane. Hello. Yeah. What the fuck? Ay, 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 man. Unfair. But uh, whatever, man. Whatever. Like, enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy your early game. We'll see each other in a couple moments. Oh, Faker comes in to bot lane. So it's an often made mistake on the Alistair. You flash, you think you're in W range, you're not. You hit head but the ground. But we'll have another look at the play in the mid lane. Yeah, that was that play by Carrier's rough. It happens, right? You think you're in W range and you aren't. How the fuck is Broken Blade like so far behind in CS? By the way, three people again trying to gank mid lane. What the fuck? And uh, another question I have like, how is BB behind in CS versus Zeus? Right? Sure, yet this roam into mid lane, but. Huh? Uh, that's uh, crazy. But uh, yeah, regardless. Overall, I, I don't know when like Alistair was picked here. It's a bit of a weird pick, I feel like. I mean, Alistair versus Nautilus, that matchup is like fine, I think. Uh, Alistair versus uh, Draven mm, could be better, I think. And versus the top side, it just feels not great at all, right? Execute damage, like low HP damage, and so on and so on. Right, all stuff that uh, like fucks you over, even with your uh, if you have old, right? Not sure why he had to use the ghost there, though. Okay, owner should be all right here. Let's just shove in the wave and uh, yeah, yeah, flash for ghost and oh, beautiful. Baker comes in, steals the kill. We'll have to say, and oh, I'm okay. Now give this, this give this one to Guma maybe. Uh, Q. Uh, mid lane. Baker may be eternal, but Mickey is 
Man, like some people, I mean... Yes! Yes! Okay, finally! But good, like, the kill got to Gumayushi in the end. But Jesus Christ, man, is that guy fortunate. But also not trying to execute, man. Like... Yeah, fuck you too. Man, these G2 people, man. Okay. Absolute fighting time now. Old comes in. Another old comes in. That's the first one. Faker though. Yeah. In a bit of a rough spot, let's just say. Carrier. Yep. Can look for something. Oh wait, Caps, watch out! Oh! There's Kesante. He didn't watch out. Kesante was there and did Kesante thing. Uh Summoner Spells 1-2 gained. Flash and Ghost used. Not too bad. Um they will get the the Herald thingy. Good for G2, I guess, but I, I, I'd like the dragon here myself, right? I'll, I, I'll, I'll be happy with that, right? Our mid lane turret not really all too low, so uh, yeah, shouldn't be a big uh, issue. He was 700 gold behind. Faker was not very, very, very fucking far behind. He was fucking 700 gold behind. Now, I mean. Ah oh, man, these casters, man. Wait, actually, we have. Do we have two European casters and one LPL caster? The fuck? Get me in some Atlas or like Chronicle or anyone. Beldas, like. Wolf, get like any of the LCK casters maybe in for like LCK. Why are they even. I mean, European casters make sense, right? Their team is at least still at the event. But I mean, for fuck's sakes, man. Uh, but again, I know I'm not the target audience for the cast and so on and so on, right? It's about, hey, tell the EU European fans watching uh, how G2 is going to win, right? That's the job of the casters. It's not about, oh, like, commentate the game. It's tell, tell them about uh, this and this. And uh, by the way, I mean, uh, as much as people might say, I'm not about, like, personally attacking these people. They, they're doing their job. And uh, yeah, let's see. Hex, Hex, Soul here being the... The thing we are fighting. Karyath gets a double pulverized, but he's split far, far from his team. And uh, yeah. Now, that's a bit annoying. Okay. Um, rough. I, I, I. But that was fucking weird. Was he still in his, uh, like, Viego W? It looked, I mean, it looked like he was invisible. Right, let me see this one again. And here, I mean, this looks fine and all, but, I mean, T1 is not fully there. And also, uh, uh, our follow-up on these plays is not really the best, right? We can throw shit at them. And yeah, that's wild. That's absolutely wild if, like, that, uh, if that's how this works, right? He was still invisible from uh, the fucking uh, is it, it's, it's not the W it's the E right the Viego E or at least for me as a spectator it looked like that and now 22 minutes it's not 20 I know but uh, yeah we're doing Baron here insect already onto uh, what's his name yike no it's Mike Mickey whatever good buffer uh, so we get the uh, what is it again? A, a TP, and we get the kill. We take that. We take that. And let's start Baron once more. Let's start Baron. And oh, TP by the Kasante. TP by Broken Blade. Baron already dead. Hello, G2. Should I uh, maybe set an alarm next time? Ansama so fucking low. Faker goes in. Oh come on. Yeah, he gets him at least. Gets in a scoop, but it's not worthwhile. Actually, it will result in... Yeah, at least the X flash. I will take that. Caps running in as well. And I mean, oh, he got caught by the Kasante, but... I, uh, yeah, again, so unfair. Caps calls his turret and... Ah, uh, whatever. Kasante, maybe uh, not as broken as uh, Rillian Soul. Nah. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh... So, two kills for uh, what are their names again? G2, we get the Baron, and uh, yeah, we'll show them what's good. What are they going to do in this game? 
right? Cassante he is getting ganked. Caps has pressed the teleport ability, but Cassante just presses Ghost, and literally look at this. He is running away, and he now even takes a fucking like free. What is it? Uh, I don't know what it's called. Oh my god, that's just annoying as fuck. Ah yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, Zeus showed uh, showed some nice stuff here. Faker comes in, and weird. Wait, what is Owner doing all the way there over there? Caps comes in as well. Yeah, Broken Blade doesn't have old red. Yeah, and uh, yeah, two for one. As much as G2 doesn't have like. Typical heart engage. You can't really do Baron when there is Aurelion Soul ulting or I say E Wing, right? You're just like completely screwed over. Faker goes in, but at the same time, Carrier and the rest of T1 see their moment for opportunity, for opportunity, off opportunity, whatever. And oh, beautifully done by owner there. Wow. Maybe it just looked cool and uh, wasn't even that impressive, but I think that was some immaculate timing. But again, here we see why that champion is not balanced at all. At all. And, and Zeus also gets revenge, right? He shows why Cassante is truly Cassante. Uh, yeah, and Faker, bloody game, 6, 8 and 3. But uh, yeah, he knew that... Like, it, it didn't matter, right? As long as he goes in, does some damage, puts the wall down and whatever, right? It is alright. Uh, wait a moment. Cassante? Ah, for fuck's sakes. And he's like calm and collected, look at him, it's like as if he just, uh, I don't know man, wake up from the fucking nap, he's like, mm, yep, mm. Uh, yeah, very nice, Faker finished the game, and again, I say it, like Faker knew his job was not really to do a lot of da damage, right, he did his damage, he like he did his things, right, but I uh, think he was more of a like, facilitator going in, right, because, I mean, it's like, who's going to stop him, right? There's so much disruption that T1 can offer, right? Especially if he proactively uses his wall, right? In combination with carriers and owner's abilities, right? It's just, it's just crazy. And then, I mean, Guma, very quietly in this game, just did so much damage, right? He was a reliable backbone for T1, and he has been for so many, uh, like, tournaments and for so many, like, like, I don't know, time, so much time, right? Uh, very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited to see what these people are going to say about Chronicler. Why aren't you casting? Why are you standing there? Uh, it's so fun. He says he runs it down lane. You, f ah, for fuck's sakes, man. Oh. He goes in, miscalculates a one-for-one -one trade that is in a with a beneficial lane position by like, I don't know, 10, 20 HP or something, dies, looks like a fucking idiot, okay, Ooh. shut the fuck up, and then he gets fucking perma ganked, level 1, minute 1 by Mickey, then, uh, what's his name, Yike comes, then Mickey and Yike come, then Broken Blade, Yike and Obama come, everyone comes, Everyone arrives at mid lane and ganks Faker. He dies to some of these ganks. He doesn't die to some others, which is all as as it was in 2015. Fucking positive for the rest of the team because they benefit from that. Am I going to say everything went clean, perfect, and Kate Cutter, cut whatever like planned? No. But this fucking narrative of like saying, oh, Faker ins it down lane because of some of these plays being way too over aggressive or him dying to a fucking three man gank with whatever. It's like, obviously, that's not all perfect, but to say he ins and runs it down lane, absolutely fucking ridiculous. His CS numbers are like on point. He's not losing fucking 20 plates or some shit. You are, oh my god, man. 
And then his impact in team fights, right? He knows, especially due to the fact that I just described, he's not really loaded with all that much damage. Still, he uses his threat into the for the bark line and with his uh, what is fucking his wall to still impact the team fa uh, fights in a meaningful way till he has scaled and farmed up to be both a relevant disruptor and damage dealer, right? Look at this, 1700 damage, the second most amount in the entire fucking game. Obviously Aurelian Soul, right? We don't have to talk about that guy. Like there is a fucking, I think, what was he? 4-0 and 6 or something, Varus, that's like completely fighting undisrupted, auto attacking as an, uh, what is it, on hit Varus against three beefy dudes and Faker still doing uh, like more damage than that than him? It's like, I mean, the disrespect and insults are crazy. Obviously, it's not perfect. Obviously, it's not like it was before. It's obviously it does not look like Chovy, but I mean, for fuck's sakes. Let's just go and see what game number three has uh, for us, right? So far, the games have been at least enjoyable, we have to say. Thank you G2 for like bringing us some entertainment games. Let's go. Okay, my friends, game number three, hopefully the final game. My voice actually is still here. I can't believe it. But what I also can't believe is, uh, yeah. T1 in the last game, potentially, leave open Tristana, which enables Yikes Ivern. That I, I think that was like partially like some of the reasons, right? It's not only that caps Tristana good, but also like it enables uh, like an Ivern, which we probably have no idea how like to play around, right? Uh, so I don't know wh uh, why we left open this opportunity. If it's again for like practicing, which I mean, it's a fair thing, but is it really because no one else at the event is going to do it afterwards, right? It's not going to be like, we're not going to face Ivern from, uh, ah, oh yes, mm. Okay, that is, uh, actually with Carrier there, the flash is okay. But uh, hello, three man gank in the second minute of the game. Oh yeah, I think uh, this faker guy is pretty washed up. Uh, yeah, he's just so bad at laning. Mm, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, three man mid lane. It's like I want to see in your solo ga uh, queue game how you're going to look if you fucking immobile mid laner is getting three man ganked at, uh, uh, before minute two. But whatever, but whatever. Probably preferable top lane matchup, right? Uh, especially considering that you want to. Wait. Where, where, where's that damage coming from? Where did that damage come from? Did he get turret shot or something? And uh, what else? Again, like what else is there really to talk about, right? Overall, let's like took, take a look at these structures, right? Uh... Yeah. <gasps> Another solo kill. Broken blade crushes you. She's so good. Oh. Or something like that is probably going through like most of these uh, people's minds right now. Can we please get like LCK casters in into this event again? I mean, again, it's like if it's an EU team, right? Have some EU caster in there, right? So that he can tell us about like the EU narratives. Uh, yeah, that was again iffy, but what shall we do? Yeah. And again, this is why I don't know why we opt into this matchup. Oh no. We did the classic, hey, let's see if they're actually in this brush or if they actually have recalled. I... Ah, for fuck's sakes. Hey! Man, but there was a lot of base damage there. We need some context for that, but Faker, uh, Faker mind gaming caps at the at the top side river area jungle area, right? That's a that's an old one. We had that one last year as well with uh, what was it? Akali and Tristana. Was, yeah, Tristana versus Akali was the matchup. And here, let's see it once more. Caps probably jumps forward. Flashes over the W. Does not have old, which is interesting. He chases him down, gets flipped, and then, uh, yeah. 
Top performance from the Steam 1 lineup. And. Oh, Faker fucks up the W. But it doesn't matter. We still get something. Mid lane turret will fall down though, no? Okay, Tristana doesn't want it. Okay. Oh my! He dodged. They say he dodged. You are fucking having a giraffe. Finally, thank you, owner. Shutting down their fucking silly asses. Yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Doesn't even take damage. Magic resistance? Question mark? Anyway, Faker is here. Broken Blade TP is in. Carrier is like, I don't know what was the setup for this, but whatever it is, it's fucked up for us. Ay, ay, yeah. Maybe they thought without caps there, like, we could be a bit more brazen, but it's like overall, it's like, hey. Anyway, Broken Blade here being attacked by the top lane gank squad. And, uh, yeah. You do the same thing in mid lane, so us ganking you top lane, it's, it has to be fine as well. Okay, okay. Oh, no, no. Hey, wait, that's all our gold lead. They got our top laner and they got an ult. That's not cool, man. Okay, hey, maybe. Nice pick there. But our. Oh, carrier. Lovely. But uh, yeah, owner still CC. He gets to live. But uh, yeah, that's about it for the positive news. They're brute forcing our turret. And also, like, yeah, bot lane. Ah, Kurva, man. I mean, how do you say without caps? He was there at the like more meaningful moment, right? Oh man, that yes, motherfucker, so fast. Get the flash, but that's about it. No, that's never enough. Yeah. Nice, ni uh, nice heads up play. Ah! Overall, our champions are also like mid as fuck, right? Uh, Talia is a champion that does next to nothing unless like the composition really is like in a good spot for her uh, Kalista, you know how I feel about Kalista if she's not support and I mean Vi I think as much as she's like cool or whatever uh, It's just not as cool as you might think it is Kind of I don't know what the start of this was but like somehow we're like getting a win or at least something resembling a dub but uh, Hey Talia versus range, for example, is just dog shit. Talia versus mid, like medium range, is like, uh, it's like okay, why have I picked this champion? She's just uh, like a very distinct champion uh, with a very distinct identity, like that you don't want in any, like in every game, right? Sure, she can be complementarily good in other cases, but if you have already like picked a non-damage AD carry. Uh, Right, doesn't matter. Okay, Caps maybe fucked it all over. Yeah, he fucked. It, yeah, he fucked the game over. Uh, like even if Guma is not dealing any relevant damage, right? See, he uh, he also attacked Mickey there ten times. Uh, but yeah, very nice. T1 here will win the game, right? They will uh, now get the Baron, and uh, now they will snowball the game. Let's go. Let's see it here once more. I was like holding around, like uh, Orian, not Orian, Talia, right? So he's standing there and hook from Carrier. Gets the R through, next R comes from an owner, Faker is there. And the thing is, like, my motherfucking support hits that, goes in, and imme immediately, like, the same sec mo moment of notice, right? The same, ah, uh, man, English doesn't have a phrase for that, but, uh, again, the same nanosecond, uh, I guess you would say. And, yeah, like the commentator guy just said, everyone else just instantly follows up. Owner presses R, Faker comes in with the ult, Zeus puts his ult down, right? And then they fuck him up. And, uh, yeah, here Yike will be taken care of. And, I mean, by the way, Faker this time, like, right? Playing way more safe, right? Uh, even though they try to attack him, 3-0 and 5, right? This time it's not like, okay, maybe let's be a bit aggressive, right? Let's get some leads or whatever, whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Like absolutely doing some um, very nice little things here and there, and uh, yeah, it's kind of ironic, right? Caps the one who's like really doing everything for this G2 lineup, being the one caught, right? It's symbolic for T1 finding 
But Metro Smalls for G2 and destroy. Hook on to Mickey. Many cooldowns used on to Mickey. They blow him up. Actually, Kara gets revenged right in the support to combat. Gets thrown in and he immediately fishes for some more, man. Carrier finally looking a bit better, right? It's not to lose, especially after the. Ah, uh, shit. And yeah, G2 while moving forward, right? Baiting some movement and aggression. Okay, Faker puts down the Thumbadon. Not sure if he wanted to do all of that, but I mean, the position he set up for his team is immaculate. He sacrifices his KDA, but overall, T1 just. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can say many things here. Like, first of all, G2's decision uh, looked pretty fine, right? They uh, like had T1 on the backbone. They couldn't really reset. They had some money, so they wanted to like do that and like wards etc. Right? All good by G2. But then the problem is like, hey, do we actually stop this Baron? Right? Oh, we melt Baron. Cruel. But oh, um, oh, like this T1 comp is really good if we group up in one tight space and Faker sees the moment of opportunity, sacrifices his KDA closes the retreat path with his ult and at that point it was all GG because then T1 just throw everything at G2 and they obliterate them uh, just how they did it in the series right there were many doubters especially after this or that but T1 they're not losing against the West they're sending them straight home bye bye G2 bye bye la 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 talkers right very nice T1 beats them up and uh, yeah, very fun that uh, Faker is the one uh, like putting the nail in the coffin with his uh, with his wall, right? Very fittingly, uh, this metaphor, right? Because like the nail in the coffin is also like covering the retreat path, like or whatever. Um, but yeah, G two again. As much as I like hate this team, right? I mean, the the team has changed a lot over the years, right? This roster is a lot more tolerable. <laughs> but as much as I have an inherent dislike for this team. Uh, thank you. Like, I mean, you made this event so much more entertaining. Did we did not get any G2 versus NA, which is like I guess kind of kind of sad, right? We had Fnatic versus TL, which like bad for Europe. They lost that one, but you can still be happy, right? Because uh, FlyQuest fucked up in uh, in the like uh, what is it play-in stage, right? Oh uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the mobile champ moves on, and I think if I'm not mistaken, anything we're going to face BLG. And then, yeah, yeah, we're going to face BLG next, and yeah, we're obviously going to get revenge. Yeah, we can talk so many more positive things here about both teams, honestly. G2 with like really nice drafting in most uh, most cases. T1's overall drafting also improved, right? Even if the drafts were a bit silly, they were still playable, and they still had windows of opportunity uh, for like generating win conditions or realizing win conditions rather. Um, and just overall, like the level of play for T1 here, like just ramping up more and more. Carrier again. I, I'm repeating myself, so maybe I'll shut up. No, I'm not. Well, I'm going to repeat myself. Zeus finally in this and the last series coming to life, not being invisible, having an impact in the overall state of affairs. Owner, like you're a fucking good. This series maybe a bit quieter, but still doing God's work, man. I remember some like past series, some past plays. That guy is just like always there if you need him. Faker, oh, he's getting a five man gang mid lane. Oh, he's not winning individual matchup. Oh. Uh, he's getting like he's getting attention in bands. He's getting attention from people coming into mid lane trying to gank him, freeing up his members, enabling up his team members, just like back then, just like he always did, and uh, still carrying the team fights either with damage, with disruption, with both. Nice. I mean, and for Guma, I mean, we can't say anything at all. Like, that guy is just not making any mistakes. Like, he is just, like, like the most beautiful AD carry, right? He's just farming well, he's not inting, he's, like, always reliable in teamfights, he deals enough, like, good amount of damage. Uh, like, he's sacrificing himself with playing, what the fuck, Kalista AD carry, uh, um, And, I mean... Enabling carrier who in this series especially right in the T1 seri uh, TL series we saw it a bit But like, he's coming alive as well like, Trying to do something and uh, like, getting to do something right here look at this man Like kind of a game winning play right because it brings T1 out of this hole that they got in from the, the early game 
mid game and like end of the mid game here coming in the 28th minute arc and uh, yeah and I think that's about it right from that moment T1 stabilizes right again that draft has like issues and uh, yeah very very nice moment here like as much as these EU uh, motherfuckers are like biased and said I think it's um, it's Dracos, right? It's like pointing out the obvious, right? This Tilstrana champion, right? You know, are not allowed to get that one. In the last game, T1 says like, hey, fuck it, you get it. And uh, yeah, they like, what do they sacrifice for that, right? They give over so many powerful champions to T1, so many comfortable champions and sure, G2 gets the lead that they want to. And I mean, they were in a prime position to uh, like hammer her down. But because they gave over so many good champions that T1 is so familiar with, that T1 has the ability already shown to like make comebacks and whatever else. And I mean, Fosea is here, very beautiful, right? His best series so far at the event and immediately gets like all kinds of positive stats, right? Uh, yeah, not much bad to say. And I'm, I've been yapping here after the series has end already ended for so long. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed your 3-0 with me. It's not, it's not much, it's just two more series, right? Today, yeah, Friday, yeah, it's just two more series and MSI is already over. It felt like we, it felt like so fast again. I, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed. Smash that subscribe button. You have already watched the entire video. I hope, hope you liked it. Put thumbs up button and so on and so on. We're going to see each other with more T1 action and more MSI content. Bye bye, my friends.